Welcome back. I'm joined now by broadcaster Tom McGurk from the Sunday Business Post and journalist with the Irish Examiner, Michael Clifford. You're both very welcome to the show. Tom, I'm going to start with you because um, you have heard what, what the company representative has said, um, that they've been holding meetings, they've got to know sure. what the worries are of the people around. Now, how did you get involved in this okay. issue? Uh, first of all, that guy should have stayed in the studio to talk to me because it would have been the first time they would come and open debate. That's the first time they've appeared in a studio with anybody, but obviously they weren't prepared to talk with me. Leave that aside. I was contacted a few months ago as, an, as a campaigning investigative journalist by people in the Midlands saying there are thousands of turbines, 600 foot tall, taller than the spire, biggest turbines in the world going into their community. They could get no answers, they could get no explanations. It seemed to be a done deal. And from there on, it has grown. And people have asked more and more questions. They have got onto the internet and talked to other companies across the world, other organizations across the world. What is happening here is that this was going to be done without any consultation with the people in the Midlands. That next they're going to wake up one morning and they're going to be over 2,000. Well, now that's not what there. Andy said earlier. Absolutely. He said he they were says they had discussing open meetings. It with lots there of people. No open meetings. Mm. There have been no open meetings. I challenge him to name one open meeting. At the end of the day, there's a whole series of questions have to be asked. First of all, all of this electricity goes to the United Kingdom. What is the value for the Irish taxpayer here? None of it is going to the Irish grid. The profit goes out of this country to the investors, mostly Chinese and American. So what has this got to do Could with I Ireland ask you, in the Tom, sense? Are you, are you against wind no, energy? No, no. Is it just the location no, you're absolutely. against? Absolutely. I have no problem so with wind energy. So if these were going energy. out into the ocean, you'd be no happy with I have no problem it. with wind farms. I have no problem with any of the, or the green agenda. And obviously, we have to use wind in the crisis. Mm. It's where you put these things. It is okay. the, 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 this is a dispute about locality. This is a dispute about turning people's homes into an industrial wind site. And what about the planning uh, um, applications? There's a yeah. rule at the moment that they can't be within 500 metres of a house. Now, is that being fulfilled by this proposal or should it be a much further distance? To tell you the truth, and as a former politician, you completely understand this. Our planning permission is at sea in terms of wind turbines. They know nothing about the crisis uh, presented by a wind turbine. Our planning laws are to deal with the size of the windows in your house or whether you can have an open mm. onto a road. Oh, but there's they also rules about, about Yes, but they've never been asked the questions of the size of a wind turbine. I mean, mm. they were referring previously to, to Roscommon County Council. How is Roscommon County Council an expert on wind turbines? We're into a whole area that very few people know anything about. Okay. And if you want to get information about the health problems, about the property crisis, it's very difficult to get it. And the wind farm people are so wealthy, they can buy the information where they want it. Mm, but Tom, Yesterday there was a demonstration outside yeah. a meeting, um, 50 people, one could argue that that's not exactly the whole community from the Midlands uh, protesting outside a meeting. I, I, are you worried that it's just the people who are going to have one of these no, near my, them that my, are concerned, my, my, obviously? I started asking questions as a journalist uh, because we as journalists like myself and Michael can mm. ask questions, go on the programmes. The, the people in the Midlands were apparently denied this, now their voices are beginning to be heard. Here is the central thing. In the past, these wind farms have been built. The people who built them then sell them on. Mm. In a very short period of time, we might have a situation where your wind farm, the massive thing in your field at the back, is owned by a box office number in Puerto Rico. That is the first thing. What is the long-term situation? Are the farmers indemnified? Why isn't the local but community it's the farmers who are accepting... The, the payments for, for yes, putting up the yes, river. Yes, and maybe yes. this would be a good point at which to turn to Mick. You have been at some of these meetings at which the yeah. communities are divided between the farmers who seem to be doing uh, making yeah. arrangements with the companies and the locals who don't want them to make those arrangements. Yeah, I mean, the first instance, the, the gentleman that was here, the open meetings he was referring to, my understanding of those open meetings are they were open to landowners who may be interested ah, in yeah. renting out their land. They were for turbine erectors. Now, yes. I, I would be coming at it from a slightly different position than Tom in that, uh, as Tom says, I would agree completely. Look, wind energy, it's, when, it's a renewable yeah. form, it's a very good form of energy. 
uh, the, the, there are objections no matter what kind of energy projects you have. Mm. By and large, the objections in this instance differ. For example, compared to, say, what's going on in North Mayo, you have various strands there of people who are opposed to the whole notion of, of uh, taking the state's resources, the conditions in which it's done, environmental, etc., the whole thing, as well as a local interest. This, to me, the opposition to wind farms tends to be basically because people are afraid for A, the value of their homes, and B, the disturbance noise. from noise in particular. And the environment, Michael, yeah. as well. And no, I, don't, I haven't seen that as much, Tom. I haven't come across that as much. To my mind, it is mainly the first two. That's just Could what, I ask what I you, seen. Mick, and indeed, Tom, have you gone... There are two wind farms already, I think one in Leitrim and one in Kerry. Have either of you actually gone to one of them and went but, but, 500 metres near it, no, and can you hear no, the noise? No, I, I haven't been that close, but the point about it is... If you were to go down there, and even as Kira was down there in the report, mm. the thing is, you need to be there over a sustained period of ah. time, particularly at night time, because the big issue here is sleep disturbance. Yeah. And that can play havoc. So at night, saw. all other sounds are yeah, gone. And, and, and a lot of it depends that. on, the, on the, the actual wind. Just one other thing, you mentioned planning. The planning situation is that there are guidelines there that are not, have no statutory basis. So okay. it's up to each local authority to implement them as they see fit. Now, they're rough guidelines for a 500 metres yes. separation distance, but the turbines for the ones that are being proposed down the Midlands are three times the size of the design that was there in 06. So you could argue, I mean, they're higher. So uh, you, you could know, argue you, nearly you could that the sound would be further For away. example, yeah. Senator yeah. John Whelan, yeah. or, or some of them, yeah. they want a separation distance extrapolating to up to one and a half kilometres. Kilometers. Now, that would not that make work. the project no, viable. No. Well, Tom, you said that this, the energy created by this, if this yeah. gets planning permission, is all going to the UK, yeah, yeah. would you be in favour of it if it was coming to Ireland? Well, I mean, is that a problem? I mean, that's a, a, that's a different question. It's important to remember that this has nothing to do with the Irish state. This yeah. is a, a, a international companies building wind farms to export energy to the UK. Let me go back to the situation Michael mentioned about the concern of people. At the moment, the wind farmers, farmers are, uh, the wind firms are uh, indemnifying the wind farmers. In other words, when they put this massive turbine up, they indemnify it under insurance. Mm. If it does fall down or if it damages yeah. or people sues, all of the other things. They should now think of indemnifying everybody in the area who were within a certain distance. I see. That and would, what distance do you think? Well, planning, I don't know. Yeah, I know. You Let's don't have know an enough, agreement yeah. on that because yeah. we're asking planners questions for something they've never seen mm. before. There's, they've never had anything this size to deal with. These are three times the size yeah. of the wind mm. turbines we have here. These are the biggest in the world. I know. 2,000 of them in a rural in rural counties in Ireland. Yeah. Why aren't they offshore? But the, the, the well, I mean, Why aren't they on the under... coast? Because it's too expensive. Could I, could I say to you, Mick, um, if you travel anywhere now on, on, on Europe, if you go to Denmark, yeah. if you go to the Canary Islands, if you go to Spain, if you go to Germany, there's something like 28,000 or 30,000 of these. Why is it that they seem to be accepting them in those countries as a kind of an environmentally yeah. friendly issue? And we're having the problems that we have well, here. Is well, it, is one it obvious, lack of knowledge? One, no. One obvious answer there is our historic planning arrangements. Oh. We are littered with one-off houses in a lot of the places ah. you're describing. Our countryside is entirely tracks, different. Mm. The vast tracts of land that won't interfere with other people. But uh, the, sorry, the, in relation to the planning, that's currently under review, and they're going to see how far they're going to have them but separated. But under review with from who? The Department of the Department Environment. Of environment. Are, are, who is the expertise in there, Mike? Yeah. Well, no more you, you're expertise. dealing with something we've never dealt with before. Well, I understand but can't that. They, can't they avail of expertise from some of these other European countries that have but put them up? Well, the, can, the other issue is it's going to come before the courts because there is currently one action from a That's village right. in North Cork where, mm. where they're hoping to, to... So how the courts will decide, and it'll be another... As I understand... And it, will the courts have the expertise? They they, can they buy it in? in, in yeah. As yeah. I understand no, it. It must, be, it must be said, there is no firm empirical evidence about the damage that they do. There have been studies in Australia, that's not in true, Canada. Right? No, there have no, been no, studies. No, that's not true. There have been studies, but none have been on a scale that would suggest that it's entirely conclusive evidence. There, there have been a number that suggest there are issues. The most recent one in Maine in the US, mm. they did it, people who lived within a kilometre and people who didn't, and the difference in their sleep patterns, and they maintained that the results of that suggest that there is 
sleep interruption as a result. Yeah. But from what I can see, there has been nothing conclusively to say mm. that on a large scale well, that this is definitely an issue within a certain distance. There, there are distinguished scientists all around the world completely disagree with you. And one of the problems in this situation is that the wind industry is so expensive, it pays for expertise. You pay enough money, you'll get an opinion you want. Let me go back to what's going to happen down here. As I understand, this is going to become a political issue in the local elections, mm. that those opposed to wind farms are going to use the opportunity to have a democratic voice to say something about it. Because these people, it is their communities. Look at the division has been caused. Can you imagine, Nora, in your house... But it's division between if farmers on the one exactly. hand who are accepting the money... If you are surrounded and by the, wind turbines, yeah. devaluing your property, mm. potentially threatening your health. I'm a campaigning journalist who is asking in these okay, questions. Right, the same, yeah. same as Christopher Brook in the United Kingdom. Mm. For example, last week, uh, 120 members of Parliament in the United Kingdom came out and said no more wind farms, farms okay. in our constituencies. The movement okay. is growing and people are asking, put them offshore where okay. nobody objects to them, well, where they're most efficient. That's the start of the next debate when you come back to us. Thank you both very Thank much very indeed. Much. Thank you.